we dropping, gamers? Let's lock and load with Transformers Reactivate, Starscream, and Bumblebee. So Transformers Reactivate is, at time of recording, a trailer for a game that doesn't exist yet? All we've seen of it so far is a single 70-second gameplayless teaser for what seems to be a generic alien invasion survival shooter with the TF brand slapped on the end. Ooh, beleaguered soldiers fighting robots and squids. Yeah, maybe it does need an IP behind it. No judgement, it might turn out alright, but that teaser's given me nothing. So it's gonna be a while before this thing materialises, and yet it already has a toy line which raises so many questions. For example, what the hell? When's it coming out? Is it coming out? Wasn't it Transformers Rise for a minute? Where did these toys come from? Why release them so early? Why does the box look faded? How long have these things been languishing in storage? Why? Are they so good? Yes indeed, welcome to the Bumblebee Starscream TF Reactivate Twin Pack, which fell out the f***ing sky recently alongside a second double drop of Optimus and Soundwave. And I can't lie, these are some of the most exciting Transformers toys I've seen in ages. I mean, these are two of the most frequently rebooted faces in the franchise. Call that Transformers regurgitated. And yet, I don't feel like I've seen them quite like this before. There's a hard freshness to them, you know? There's something about this design philosophy that seems to embrace embrace the hallmarks and personalities of these 40 year old characters and somehow find a new angle. This doesn't feel like another minor generations tweak. There's very little overt influence from like Legacy or Studio Gamer Edition other than they are Transformers. I don't know where this aesthetic came from but it feels totally genuine and it gets it. Albeit in a very machismo led modern warfare ass way that I choose to describe as Gzbogzian. There's a lot of robot gaming culture in here, if you can call it that. The trailer's human interaction and first-person perspective all feels very Titanfall. While the figures suggest a piecemeal construction aspect a la Armoured Core, like we seem to have caught the boys between skirmishes, looking like they've been hastily repaired with whatever found parts they could scrounge. These doors and knees don't match. Starscream's guns are different and his whole left side seems to have been extensively patched up and not even re-sprayed. Like he was caught short and had to cannibalise an injured skull. Warp. It seems to suggest a very Transformers-y crafting system, and I am intrigued. Anyway, let's hit the start button on Bumblebee. I mean, options. <laughs> Now this, for me, is just about the coolest Bumblebee's ever looked. It's a stunning, if aggressively heterosexual take. It has the familiar Poundy G1 silhouette through the lens of, like, reboot-era IDW, infused with the danger and visual excess of the Bayverse without really directly owing much to either. It's just a good-ass toy that is Bumblebee, in a very sort of alpha jock deployed core kind of way. It's friggin' deployed Grossman. These are Warzone bots, carved from Kevlar and Conflict, Tooled up with tactical toughness and bowling into the barracks bull bar first with a bod built like a hand grenade. Same. It's actually really impressive how the torso's formed. Like the car crumples and collapses into this dense little cluster and you can see it and I love that. Does that count as kibble? It's like you can see inside the guts of it and it works and it looks good. That's not the opposite of kibble. That's Elbvik. Face is super handsome there, like protagonist handsome. Positively glowing with razor toned cheekbones and an earnest, reassuring smolder framed by a sick chin strap helmet. Detail is divine throughout, particularly on the superb sculpted auto badge, and I appreciate that they gave him the four little arm notches from the trailer. Where's your gaffer tape? Love the shoulder covers with the fake out headlights and the red glob continuity. But the hands are set solid, like they're fused with the forearms, they're the same part, so there's no wrist action at all. I mean, it doesn't really hurt, it's not a major thing, it's just weird. When was this designed? Legs are cut in a crispy clean line there. Powerfully poseable and incredibly unbothered by the kibble, with all four wheels tidily stashed on his shins there. Weapons are a bit of a gag, considering how serious game face the vibe otherwise is. Like, these little starter grade pistols are so funny. You can hardly see him just barely poking out of his fists there or shoulder mounting for an even dafter blue streak thing. You dumbass, I love you. So yeah, robot mode's a bit of a banger. I'm not used to Bumblebee being this dashing. He's like the ace rimmer of Bumblebees. Rimblebee or bum rimmer. Probably the first one. <laughs> seen some 
some of these transformation moves before. The front wheels unwrap from the feet in a fan fave maneuver that I have come to call the Siege Hound Reach Around. That roof panel demands a harsh tug through, which can be scary, but it kind of plays into the aggro of the whole scenario. It's alive and it thirsts for violence. And this alt mode is yellow car! This little combat buggy mode is so tight, man. Bouncing into battle like something straight out of Halo. Shields up and weapons free, but with a streak of unseriousness that makes it a really compelling adaptation. Like these armored riot van windows are all business, while the little roundy pop out Herbie headlights are so cute, so beach. And we're once again invited to bang the guns up front on these silly little slats for a supremely stupid, supreme assault mode, no slicker than like a 1980s battle vehicle moment? Like Carnivac or a Stunticon? It's so dumb. What is the tone here? But like, it is Bumblebee. There's definitely the ghost of a beetle in there. You can see it in the humped form and the distinctive windows. Distindos. It's so survival mode that it almost ceases to be a beetle. It is very video games, but it's not so far removed that it becomes pure space fantasy like War for Cybertron did. It's just a bit more relatable. Grounded in reality, and steeped in the character's heritage with the bones of something real. It's good, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, Starscream is a f***ing nightmare. Check out this friggin' fright. Slender and towering with a bleakly unhinged malice boiling below the surface. He looks fiercer than ever, unbeholden to the stodge of siege, untethered from the same old, same old G1 churn, hated by the world and loving it. I'm not sure what it is that makes this feel so new, because it's visible rolled in a ton of design aspects from other Starscreams. The classic original colours, the Armada wings and anime angst, even some latter day live action vibes, but in a way that stands on its own, makes sense, and doesn't feel like Beggy? This is a case study of an icon reimagined. And it's also a good toy. That helps. Like, this head is just magnetic. The helmet looks a touch tighter than his usual style, and it's hitting. And the face is friggin' feral. Look at that haunted gaze and spiteful glower. There's damage there. There's pain. And it's about to be your problem. Bod's a handsome handful there, dominated as always by the famous Fanta Keg cockpit and fizzing with visual flavor. It's kind of giving shatter with the muscle car illusion shoulder pads, extreme robot nipple vents, and safety flooring flourishes, all bolstered by a banging backpack, which Constantine is cleanly to give us the signature shoulder pylons and enough wiggle room for an ominous outward flap. Arms are kind of holding their own out here with menace and grace and an eerie open-handed nonchalance. Legs are some hot steppers, breathing with mecha might and an oddly dainty eleganza. And the overall articulation's absolutely nuts, with a horrifyingly spindly ring each and the flexi joint pads adding an unnerving extra writhe. The only slight slip up for me here is the hollow thighs and wrists, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's by no means a killer. It just takes it from a 10 to like a 9.6. But this is phenomenal stuff, man. It's Starscream as a streak of wretched rage, unbalanced, asymmetrical, and rife with implied storytelling. Like the guns being different is such a low key showstopper. And like the replacement armor isn't simply the wrong color. Color, they've got totally different sculpting to the other side. This is how you hype up as yet unseen media. Don't you want to know what happened here? Where did these spare bits come from? Nowhere chill, I reckon. What became of you? Show me the nasties, baby. <laughs> Transformation is, I don't want to say predictable, but like classical. It's play in the hits remixed. We got the nose cone fold out, but with a neat skidzy head flap flip flop twist. The backpack elongates tidily along the fuselage. The shin facade shifts dramatically upward while the bulk of the inner remains to become thrusters. It's genius. It's a joy. Work. And the jet mode is so cool. So streamlined and sharp and fresh and quintessentially Starscream from so many angles. The shape of it is so aggressively spear-pointed, like a poison dart to the heart. The wings are spread wickedly wide, like a veil of murder. Echo in Armada once again, with the little micro wings and the red edging. Redging. Redging fils -aimé. And the brutal triple boosters blasting him forth. Not sure if the backpack's quite nestled perfectly there. That might be my fault, but I don't think so. And I love the little pop of no reason blue 
there, like a pool of calm. I don't know, gang, this might be my favorite Starscream ever. It's just one toy, and yet they've packed in so much charisma, personality, action, and authenticity. It's fearsome, and I'm honestly gagging for more. I promised myself I wouldn't dance the Seeker dance again, but I'd happily take a trio of these. This in black and lavender? I'm yours. So yes, massive recommend on Reactivate. This is a tasty two-pack. They're both wonderful, and I love the dynamic of Starscream versus Bumblebee. It's a nice boy who likes helping and cuddles, versus literally a dagger that developed an id. Of course they'd have beef! Definitely a bit of a flashback here to the 2018 movie and its cliff-top face-off. Probably the most iconic Bumblebee versus Starscream moment, and it wasn't even Starscream. But it worked a treat on the screen, and that totally carries over into Reactivate. The toys. God, it's just so weird that they're already out. Months or possibly years before the game surfaces. While characters like Barricade, Shatter and Dropkick, and even Mirage don't get fully realized figures until long after the heat's off. Make it make sense. It's pretty transparent that Reactivate the idea and Reactivate the toys were already in the bag at Hasbro way before Reactivate the game was announced. Maybe they just bought up an existing work in progress robot game and flex tape the Transformers brand onto it, or maybe they didn't, but I think they did. And don't get it twisted, I'm buzzed for it. I'm rooting for Reactivate. I would die for another good Transformers game, but maybe we've had our time? Look, I'm a Transformers fan. I have a PlayStation. I want this game to happen, but I just don't think it's gonna, because game development is so volatile. Every day there's projects getting dropped, studios shutting down. Remember Transformers Heavy Metal? Remember Transformers Universe? the game? I can just feel the hope retreating. But this game better make it, man. Come on, Splash Damage. I'm on your side. I just don't want to have to see hundreds of smug wise guys chiming in about, more like Transformers deactivate. Fingers crossed for the future, but for now, the toys are spectacular. These are exceptional Transformers. Some of the most refreshing, inventive, and pitch-perfect iterations of the cast in years. And whatever tie-in they needed is alright with me. I feel revived Vitalized, reinvigorated, replenished, and dare I say it, regeneration one. Respect! <laughs>Let's go gamers, W, high score, I don't know. Oh, whatever. Thank you for watching everybody. These are brilliant. Please do go and check them out. But not as brilliant as my lovely patrons. Thank you for keeping the motor running over here. We love it. Big thank you this time to my personal champ, Lizzie Minton. This isn't even a gaming shirt. It's periphery. It's a metal band. Can't stop me wearing band shirts. Even when it's not one, it still is. All right, later gang. Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's awesome Transformers reviews. Logocentric vocabulary.